Let's look at some superheroes and television kits, starting with the 1963 issue of Superman, with the two box variations. Superman was molded in a powder blue plastic, and on the original issue has the S logo on his chest and cape etched into the plastic, where the comic scenes issue did not have this. And there's also a sign on the base of this kit. Here you see a close-up detail of the original 1963 kit. And here's the 1974 Comic Scenes box. 1965's Superboy kit. Also molded in the same powder blue as the Superman kit. Here we see the original issue with its sign, the dragon, crypto, and the cave. Watch out for the dragon's tongue being missing. And on the original issue again, the S's are molded into the plastic. And on the comic scenes reissues, they are not. Here's the comic scene reissue box, which came with an eight-page comic. 1964's Batman. Aurora beat the television show out with this kit, and thus made it very popular and sold very well for them. The original Batman once again comes with a sign on the tree and has a bat on the branch. Here's a close-up of the owl only on the original issue and the bat logo is molded right on his chest and here's the 74 comic scenes box. 1966's Robin There's a twist on this kit as the original issue is fairly common and the comic scenes issue, which is in 1974, is more harder to find. The original is originally molded in white plastic. It shows Robin at the control panel. With his foot on the switch, and here's that original issue sign, which did not exist in the 1974 comic scenes issue. And here's the Comic Scenes box, the Teen Wonder. 1967 brought us the only Aurora issue of the Penguin, thus making it pretty scarce and desirable. The Penguin's standing on a box of umbrellas with a batarang sticking out of it. He has a real fragile umbrella with a tag on it. And he also has a monocle and a cigarette with a cigarette holder and an umbrella in his other hand as well. The kit was originally molded in black plastic. Other villains were planned by Aurora for the Batman TV show, but since the show shut down, so did Aurora scrap the molds. 1966 brought us Ideal's Captain Action figure brought to styrene plastic by Aurora. This was kind of a silly idea by Aurora because nobody really cared about Captain Action, just the nice outfits of superheroes that he could wear. This kit is very tall. It stands about the life size of a Captain Action, if he were alive, of course. Here's a close-up of his face and decal. 1966's Incredible Hulk, the original issue in the long box. The Hulk was originally molded in metallic green and later changed to a brighter green in the 1974 comic scene series. In the comic scene series, he's pretty desirable, and he's also very desirable as an original issue. The sign was omitted from the 1974 issue, and also all of the dates on these kits in 74 were updated on the bases. And here's the comic scenes box. 1966 brought us Captain America in the original long box in a nice colorful bright box and here's the built up the original had splashes and a sign 
The original kit was molded in that powder blue, the same color that Superman kit came in. A later issue of this kit in 74 was more of a brilliant blue. Here's an overhead view of the three pieces of wood that come on the Captain America kit. And here's the later 74 issue box. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man in the 1966 original long box. Spider-Man's seen standing here on a banister, shooting his web down on a villain. The original issue was in tan plastic, and in 74 it changed to a bright orange plastic. The sign was omitted on the comic scenes kit as well as the villain's gun and the tin can under his foot. Here's the Comic Scenes box of 1974. Let's have a look now at the 1965 original and only issue of the Wonder Woman kit. This kit is scarce and highly sought after by collectors because it never was reissued and the ones that do exist are uh, scarce to say the least. She's molded in flesh tone plastic and she does have a sign and a rope and she's lassoing an octopus coming out of the water. There's a flash of lightning. 1967's original issue Lone Ranger kit. The Lone Ranger figure is mounted on the White Stallion kit horse. There was no sign for the Lone Ranger in either the original issue or the 74 comic scenes kit. The original issue plastic color was powder blue with a white horse. And here's the 74 comic scene issue box. Tonto! 1967 original issue box and here's the built up identical in both issues except for the color plastic of the original was tan and it was later changed to tan no it changed to a little more orangey tan and it was also updated on the base to 1974 and here's the box Here's 1967's original issue of Tarzan. Beating his chest and standing on top of a slain lion. Original issue plastic was a pale tan, while the reissue in 1974 comic scenes was more of an orange tan. Here's a close-up look at the lion. And here's an overhead view of Tarzan. And here's the comic box, issued in 1974. Here's Zorro, 1965's original and only issue of Zorro. Molded in black plastic, Zorro also stood on the white stallion horse kit. But he was molded in black plastic, and you didn't have to do too much painting to this kid if you were lazy. You could just paint his flesh flesh and go with him. <laughs> Zorro is a fairly scarce kit and pretty desirable. Here's an overhead view. Push Me, Pull You, Dr. Doolittle. 1968's original and only issue of this kit was molded in light gray plastic and shows Rex Harrison standing behind this double-headed llama with a parrot on his head. And there is a sign on the base which is molded onto the base. This kit's hard to come by, but not a whole lot of desirability for it. The Adams Family Haunted House Kit. A classic monster house kit. Although it's not a figure kit, so we wanted to feature it in our video. The only issue of this kit was issued in 1964. It came in light gray plastic. It had a cardboard cutout sheet of inserts that you could put in each of the windows. 
It had four molded ghosts that worked on the bar you see here on the back and moved around within the inside of the house. There's a railing all around, and there's a lot of little detail of people looking out the windows, and it's a very neat kit. If you look closely, you might find some of your favorite characters. There's Lurch looking out the top. Here's one of the ghosts that moves when you turn that lever, pull it inside and out. There's Grandma down in the bottom window. And there's Ken Weatherwax with Lisa Loring. A scarce kit. Here's 1966's original issue of James Bond. Actually, the only issue that was issued by Aurora. This kit came molded in gray plastic. James is seen aiming his pistol while he's leaning against a wall. There's a tree with a leaf and a branch, a little clump of grass. There's a sign on the base and another little tree leaf by his right foot. Good likeness of Connery. Here is Odd Job, the 1966 Aurora issue, the companion kit to James Bond. Odd Job is molded in tan plastic and is a little less rare than James Bond. He's still a pretty tough kit to find. Odd Job has a tree stump, a broken rifle on the base, and a little bit of brush along with the sign. Here's an overhead view of Odd Job. Watch him toss that derby. The Land of the Giants Snake Scene Kit. 1968 brought us a terrific issue bringing the television show to life in styrene plastic. Here a giant snake attacks three people holding up a pin. There's a few clumps of grass, a sign, and three victims. This was molded in a metallic green plastic and built a very nice, beautiful, detailed model. The snake is outstanding for its detail. Here's an overhead view of the coils. Here's a close-up of the people with the pin and the sign. Dick Tracy, 1968's original issue kit, molded in dark blue plastic. Dick Tracy is seen here standing on a fire escape, aiming his pistol. There's a couple of posts and a chain, and there's a great brick wall with some bars in the window. There's a tin can discarded and a garbage can full of garbage. Dick Tracy is not real common, but if you look for a while, you will find one at a toy or model show. Here's an overhead view of the cobblestone street. And here's Dick Tracy's Space Coop, the 1968 issue, the only issue, molded in yellow plastic. The color you see the Space Coop in is its original plastic color here. Space Coop has landed on a moon-like surface and has Detective Smith, Dick Tracy Jr., and the Moon Maid with the kit. Mr. Spock, the English Aurora version. Never released in the United States, this black plastic version of this kit is very scarce. AMT also reproduced this kit exactly from the same mold in white plastic. And it is more common in the United States. Spock is seen here about to phaser out this three-headed snake-like dragon creature. Here is an overhead view of Spock. Ah, the 418 Lost in Space robot from the popular 60s TV show. 
The kit was issued in 1968, the only issue. came with clear plastic parts for the dome, and very often this fire ray shooting out of its right hand is missing from this kit because a lot of collectors thought it looked silly and didn't want to put it on their robot. Here's a shot of the base, and this is a very rare kit. It's very desirable. Here's the 419 lost in space, the Cyclops and the Rock. This is a smaller version of the larger 420 kit, which we'll see next. This is manufactured in tan plastic and has the five Lost in Space characters on the bottom. Here's a close-up of the rock. And here's some of the characters attacking and fleeing from the monster. 1966's 420 Lost in Space kit with the chariot. This kit is very desirable and has sold into the thousands. If it's sealed or unbuilt in the box and perfect, even built-ups fetch a good dollar for this kit. This kit is the 419 kit with a larger rock base making it taller and the moon buggy on the moon. This model is also called the Cyclops and Chariot. The same identical figures as the 419 kit are on this kit. The Man from Uncle Kits. These were the first of the kits that interlocked together two separate kits that went together to make one scene. Pretty neat idea, huh? There's Napoleon Solo and Ilya Koryakin. There's some trees, there's a sign on each kit, and there's a lantern. Here Napoleon is climbing over the wall. Very often his gun is missing. Ilya, however, gun is molded onto his hand. There's a trellis and a few leaves and bushes. The kits are molded in flesh tone plastic. Here is the Munsters kit from the TV show The Munsters. The 1964 issue is molded in black plastic. In this kit you almost never find when you find it as a built up complete. Our version here is even missing a couple of parts, like the electrodes at the top of Herman's chair. It has two peel and stick picture frame pictures, one that goes in the picture frame and one that goes on the television set. Here's Eddie Munster and Wolf Wolf, and here's Herman in his chair. And here's an overhead view of the Munster's living room scene. 1970s hard boxed Mod Squad station wagon. Here, for customizing, we added a diorama base which does not come with the kit. And we thought it'd be exciting. The three Mod Squad figures stand next to the kit. The kit's a 1952 Mercury, so it's multi desirable. It's desirable to comic character collectors. It's desirable to 52 Mercury collectors because it's the only 52 Mercury kit available. And it's also desirable to Aurora collectors. 1969 brought us Archie's car. Molded in bright yellow plastic. This silly jalopy has lopsided tires. It has a single exhaust with a piece of tape on it. And let me tell you something, this is a real peach to build to make everything fit together real nice. Archie and Veronica are seated in the front seat, and Archie's dog is in the back seat. This is not too hard a kit to find, you can still find them. But this kit, the Banana Splits Banana Buggy, is a hard kit to find. Yes, it's rare. 1969's issue, and only issue, of the banana buggy came in yellow plastic. You could build it 
four different ways putting your favorite character in the car and customizing the car to their character. And then you could put the other three people on a park bench. Yes, this kit is very tough to find. You'll look for a while before you find a banana splits banana buggy. And those of you who have one know that it's pretty rare.